What's up everybody, this is Mike and in today's video we are going to talk about the DJI Mavic Pro 2 and the best cinematic settings for that drone. I've been flying this drone for the past week every single day and I think I have managed to gather enough impressions of that drone so I can compile the best settings for you guys so you don't waste your time checking out different things and maybe give these settings a try to see if you like them or not. But before I even start talking about these settings, don't take my word for it, just watch this video and see if you like it. This has been made with the settings that I'm going to talk about. So enjoy this short video. First thing I need to talk about is the resolution. I always try to film in the highest resolution possible, except when I'm going for slow motion shots in 120 frames per second, but in this video I have filmed everything in 4K. So we have two different options when it comes to 4K. We have 4K full FOV, which is 75 degrees field of view, and you have 4K HQ. The difference between the 4K HQ and the 4K full FOV is that in 4K HQ you are filming in 55 degrees field of view, so your field of view is a bit narrower, but your video is in 10 bit. In comparison, 4K full FOV films in 75 degrees, so you have a wider field of view, but your video is in 8 bit. However, I haven't really noticed a very noticeable difference, so I think my personal preference is to keep switching between the two until you are satisfied with whichever shot you're going for. So if you have uh, something that needs a larger field of view and you want to capture something wider, then pick the 4K full FOV and in case you don't have any wide objects that you want to capture, then you can experiment with 4K HQ. Next, I always film in 24 frames per second because that is the most natural look for the human eye and it's the most cinematic in my opinion. So I prefer to shoot in 24 frames per second instead of shooting in 30 and then editing in a 24 frames per second project. Just much easier for me to keep everything in 24. When it comes to color profile, I always shoot in D-Log M and then I color grade in post. I just don't like the HDR and the normal color profiles they're just not working well for me. So I have made a lot that I'm using for color grading the D-Log M footage. You can check it in the description below. It's made by me, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. You can buy it if you want to support me, but if you don't, it's still fine. You can still achieve some great results by color grading yourself. It's just something that I'm using and I want to share it with you. So once again, it will be linked in the description. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is the camera settings and more specifically the ISO, the shutter speed and the aperture. With the Mavic Pro 2, we have a variable aperture. So that's great because you can adjust the aperture depending on the exposure that you're going for. So I have a couple of settings that I'm always keeping on and that is shutter speed at 50 because I'm shooting in 24 frames per second and you need to have double your frame rate as your shutter speed to achieve the maximum cinematic results. I have the ISO set at 100 because you need to have the lowest ISO possible to avoid any graining or low resolution looking footage. 
and then I play with the aperture in order to achieve the best exposed shot. We have the option to go from f2.8 to f11 on the DJI Mavic Pro 2. So I start going from 2.8 to 11 to see which aperture is going to expose my shot properly. In most cases, if I'm shooting in sunny weather, it goes all the way to 11. And in case the shot is still overexposed, then I can allow myself to adjust the shutter speed just a bit uh, until the shot is properly exposed. So don't be afraid to adjust the shutter speed. Not every single time you will be able to have the shutter speed set to 50 or 60 and then um, expose your shot properly. Sometimes it's too sunny, you have a lot of light, so you need to adjust um, the aperture and the shutter speed if you don't have filters. If you do have filters, you will be able to play with both of these and set them up correctly. But for now, since we don't have filters, I will be getting the Polar Pro filters very soon uh, and the Freewell ones as well. But for now, I don't have any filters, so I need to do uh, these changes manually. Another thing that I've made is I have set the customizable button on the back of the remote to focus in the center of the screen and I press the button every single time before I start shooting so I know everything that I'm going to shoot will be in focus. That's a little tip that I got from my subscriber. I'm not really sure about the name of that subscriber but if you're watching this thank you for letting me know about this because it's quite useful. Before I start shooting I take a really good look around me to see how much space I actually have. If I have a lot of space, if I'm in a wide open area, then I set my mode to cinematic mode because it slows down the reaction time of the sticks. It makes everything slower, buttery smooth, but the drone is also harder to stop. So if you need to suddenly uh, release the sticks and stop, the, the drone will continue to drift to the side or forward or backwards, whichever direction you're going to. Uh, but keep that in mind. So if you, have, if you have a lot of space around you, set it to cinematic mode. If you don't, however, set it to tripod mode from the switch on the remote controller and you should be good to go. So those are the two modes that I keep switching between. So if I don't have a lot of space, I use tripod mode. If I do, I use cinematic mode. When it comes to gimbal movement, you definitely need to be aware that you don't need to move the gimbal too much. You need to keep it slow. You need to keep it steady and smooth. And to do that, I advise you to follow those settings. So I have set my max gimbal pitch speed to 10 and I have the gimbal pitch smoothness set to 24. On top of that, I have also enabled the gimbal tilt limit to 30 degrees and that allows the drone to keep going up to 30 degrees and gives you a lot more flexibility when you're going for that reveal shot, slowly going forwards, revealing the object that you're filming. But please keep in mind, if you go all the way up, you might see the props in the frame. So keep that in mind. When I finish filming everything, I import everything to my computer. I set up a new project. It's either in 4K 24 frames per second or 1080p 24 frames per second again. Uh, for YouTube, I tend to upload in 1080p, but sometimes I um, switch it up and upload in 4K. But for the most part, I keep it in 1080p, 24 frames per second. Once I import all of my files, I choose the right music that will go well with that type of footage that I've taken. I cut all my clips to fit the music and fit the mood that I'm going for. And then finally, I color grade it once again. I color grade with my own LUT that I've made for the d -Log M uh, color profile. It's quite useful and it gives so much saturation, so much pop into the footage. It makes a huge difference and I will link it below in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. It's just five dollars. And that's pretty much it. It's a simple process but it takes time to get to this uh, point where you know what you want from your drone, you know what to expect from that drone. Personally, in my previous drones, the Spark and the Mavic Air, it has taken me so much more time to get to this point where I feel like I can create something nice and cinematic. But here with this drone, maybe because I'm just a bit more experienced now, but I am a lot more comfortable with that drone. I feel I can do so much more with it and I'm quite happy with how the footage looks like. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. 
Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you have enjoyed my cinematic settings tutorial. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao!